Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and in this video I want to show you a template for making a leather bracelet with a pattern inspired by Celtic Knotwork, like this one. The dimensions are customizable, so you could make many different variations, like for example I'm wearing a different one here, and the pattern can be randomly generated and adjusted, so each bracelet could be one of a kind. If you want to use your own designs, we also made a basic bracelet template that you can use, and these instructions are also going to work for that. We'll talk about materials, different things that I tried. I'll show you some ways of measuring your wrist and how to install the snaps. So let's jump into it. We're gonna need some leather or leather-like material and a way to install the fasteners. Links in the description. If you're using animal leather, make sure it's safe for laser cutting, like this stuff sold by Glowforge. We also wanted to try some alternatives and we got a couple from two different suppliers. This one is sold as Laserable Leatherette by Houston Acrylics and this one is called the Saddle Collection by Johnson's Plastics and it has a sort of soft backing. It's a little bit more flexible. I'll show you some tests later in the video. For the snaps I got this very inexpensive kit that included the tools and about 10 sets of snaps. I'll show you how to use it. The bracelet can be customized to fit and to do that we need to measure the circumference around the wrist and I have a couple of suggestions on how to do it. If you're using a soft tape, you can place it tightly around your wrist, like these. You need to add about a quarter inch to your measurement to accommodate the thickness of the leather on the snap. Another option is to place your finger under the tape to create some wiggle room and then use that dimension. In this case, I got seven and an eight. Another option is to grab a scrap piece of paper and put it around your wrist. I added some tape so I could test the fit, see if I liked it. And when I was happy with that, I marked the location. Then I took it off, made it flat, and measured it with a simple ruler. You will find the links for both bracelet templates in the description down below. And once I'm here, I'm going to scroll down to see uh, all the options we can change. So starting with the length, we need to enter the circumference of the wrist, which you measured in the previous step. For me, that was 7 and an 8, so I'm going to click here and enter it to five and I'm going to press enter to confirm. The width is mostly an aesthetic choice. You can decide to make your bracelet narrow or as wide as you want. The width also changes the number of snaps. As the bracelet gets wider, more snaps get added automatically to fill the space. I'm going to return that. And for the rest of the parameters, you can leave them as the defaults. You should know that the snap size and the snap hole parameters are set to the kit that we use and that is linked in the description. Now let's talk about customizing the pattern. I'm going to scroll down a bit to see the different options we can change. Although my goal here is not to explain all of them, um, only to give you a running start. I think part of the fun is going to be for you to explore it. Um, but I want to let you know that there are a couple of videos that go deeply into the weeds of how this pattern was made, and those are going to be linked in the description. But I want to mention two things. First, I think the main way in which you can explore the pattern is by changing the seed. And this is a number that serves as the starting point for the way in which the pattern gets randomized. The other thing I wanted to explain a little bit is that if you want to keep the size of your bracelet, but you want to change the complexity of the pattern, you would change the scale down here which is the size of the grid upon which the knot work is built. So for example, uh, we have this one inch bracelet here. And if I want to make it a little bit simpler, I would make the scale uh, bigger. So uh, here I get like bigger, chunkier knots. And if I wanted a pattern that was denser, then I would make the scale smaller. Uh, each individual uh, square in that grid would be smaller. So my pattern starts getting denser and denser and I'm still keeping the size that I want it. And finally, once I'm happy exploring all the different options for my pattern um, and I'm happy with it, then I can hit the blue button to get a cuttable file. So I'm going to hit it to download an SVG and let's see what the cutting looks like. Here's my bracelet on the Glowforge interface. And one important thing to note is that the pink circles on the template are a preview for the size of the snaps. So we won't be cutting or scoring those. So I'm going to need to set them to ignore. For the rest of the settings, I'm going to do what Houston Acrylics recommends on their website. You can also find those numbers on the template page. So they say that you could use the thin natural leather setting on Glowforge for cutting. 
Um, so I'm going to cut the holes and the bracelet with that. But for the engraving, they recommend uh, a manual setting, and that would be 600 speed, 12 power, and 225 lines per inch. So let's see what this looks like. This is how the bracelet comes out of the laser cutter. And notice how the holes are the correct size for installing the snaps. So let's see how to do that now. Taking a closer look at the kit, we have these tools. We have the anvil, the setting tool, and a hole punch. And each set of snaps has four components that match in pairs. In our case, we won't need the hole punch because we cut that hole with the laser cutter. You'll see that the anvil has a curved side that can support the cap and another side that can hold the eyelet. Let's start by installing the cap, which is that big shiny button. You'll see that I have the underside of the bracelet facing up. Then I'm going to push it through the hole and support it on the curvy side of the anvil. Then we can place the socket and then I'm going to use the setting tool to shape that tube into a rivet by hammering it. If the socket doesn't spin, I know it's sufficiently tight. Now we can move to the other side of the snap. So we'll place the eyelid on the matching side of the anvil and then with the bracelet facing up, we'll push it through the hole. Then the stud goes on and then we'll set it again using the hammer. Once again, I'm checking that it doesn't spin and we are done. I'm gonna check for the fit and I think it's good. I made a couple more to compare these synthetic materials. The Johnson's Plastics one is thinner and more pliable. And the one from Houston Acrylics is much thicker and it feels a bit more like leather. Although I would say that the quality of the engraving on both is quite similar. And I think the texture on the right side is very leather-like on both of them. Wearing this one is a bit like wearing a piece of fabric, so it's fairly comfortable. And this one is a bit more stiff and it feels more durable, but I have to get back to you on that one. I find these patterns beautiful and fascinating. I think it's really interesting that they can be sort of described as code. And then we can explore so many variations by changing a few numbers. It's also fun to do a wearable project as we haven't done as many of those. And I hope you liked it too. If you found the video useful, you can help the channel by clicking like and subscribing and leave us a comment. Let us know what you want to see next. And thank you so much for watching.